What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another day, another dollar with your boy. We're going to be breaking it down. Today was a wild and wacky ride. Uh, <laughs> I mean, an absolute train wreck for the buyers today is absolute train wreck. Uh, today's video is most likely going to be a relatively long one. Uh, we're, there's a lot to cover, a lot of information to go through, uh, a lot of destinations to mark. Um, and I, you know, I kind of want you guys to mark them along with me. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, some levels that you may be interested in in the future, uh, stick around as we will be going through uh, both the 30 minute on our ES and the 30 minute on the NQ. Uh, and we're going to break it down and kind of just go through and mark uh, destinations on our uh, profile here for future reference. All right. Uh, but first and foremost, I want to thank everybody that comes out and watches these videos. I do appreciate it. Hopefully you guys uh, find some type of value with this. If not, then, you know, it's helping me out. So hopefully it helps you out. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. So first thing I want to talk about is uh, price levels that we reached today in the ES. Okay. So yesterday's video, I was discussing uh, in the video about my daily balance how my daily balance was right around the 63 level, uh, which was basically, or 60, what was it, 65, 50? Yeah, 65, 50, or uh, 63, 75, somewhere in that range, 65, 50, I think is what my balance high was. Uh, so today we popped our head above what our balance high was at 65, 50, uh, just a hair, right? Just by a hair, and then absolutely sold off. I mean, we hit my balance high and then rejected. And that's what you look for in a balance zone. So if I were to zoom in here and then mark the levels that I had um, as my, hold on, let me get this a little bit more steady for you guys. All right. So if I were to take this chart here, this 30 minute chart and mark the levels that I had as my balance area, this is what it would look like. This would be last Wednesday. Yeah, last Wednesday. So this area here would be my balance high that I'm highlighting currently. And we'll label it, we'll label it red for resistance. Uh, so we'll label that red. So that was our balance high area. And then this is our, our balance low area that I'm about to highlight. This down here will be our balance low area. So this is the zone that I was talking about on our daily chart. Um, this is our zone. So whenever you're in a balance area, typically you chop around and bounce from side to side until you break out of balance to one side or the other, right? Uh, so whenever you're in balance, you know, there's two sided trading, there's upside trading, you know, buyers or sellers in both sides of the market. So buyers buy at the lows, sellers sell at the highs, right? And that's exactly what happened today. We came up near what I had marked as our balance high and what others may have viewed as their balance high area. And we, you know, pushed up against it, stretched it, which is one of the scenarios, right? Whenever you have a balance area, you either get near the high of it and back off, you push above it, stretch the balance high and then back off, or you push above it and never look back. Those are usually your three scenarios. Uh, in this case, we pushed above it, stretched it by just a hair and backed off pretty aggressively as we ended up with an outside day down. Now, what does an outside day down mean? Well, it means we opened above the previous day's high, right? Opened above the previous day's high, which was at 55.25. So we opened up with a gap above the previous day's high. We filled that gap and then proceeded to push all the way lower and took out that daily low, that previous day's low. Not only did we take out that previous day's low, we took out Tuesday's low and almost pushed our way down toward uh, Monday's low of this week. So, uh, you know... And the way we view this and how we view it and how we understand the context of it all is if we look at our daily time frame here, uh, you can see how we pushed up to that balance area that I had marked, right? Had our balance high marked here and boom, reversal, 
big reversal to the downside. So we just stretched our balance high by a hair today and rolled over pretty good. And that may be uh, and the reason I had that as my balance high and in yesterday's video, I was discussing how I would like to see us if we were to get above this, how the reason for this being my balance high is if we were to get above the 60 level uh, and push above it and find acceptance. And that means we would find, uh, you know, I would have more confidence in buying in this market because that means that we would get over the 50, we would get over the 20 day moving average, right? So having confidence uh, with confirmation, right? Having confirmation would have gave me confidence in this market's ability to continue to push up higher and, you know, potentially fill this upside gap. But now seeing how we just put, barely stretched it, right? Didn't find any acceptance above, didn't even test the 50 nor the 20 day moving average and just rejected with pretty good aggression. Uh, you know, and that is partly due to short term traders and then, uh, you know, news events such as Jackson Hole. But more or less, the market got too long too early and this market decided to roll over and push lower. Now, what you look to do in this balance zone is push lower and test our balance low at 43.50. Now, do we get near it, hold it and, you know, you know, just continue to chop around in this large balance area? Or do we take it out, fill the gap to the downside and begin one time framing down? You know, those are some scenarios that we are looking for. If the market doesn't like what Papa Jerome Powell has to say in tomorrow's uh, Jackson Hole interview, then this market will most likely continue to push lower, uh, especially after seeing the big push down today. Now, we did have some re uh, relatively large sets of single prints, and I'll show you what those are here in a minute. Uh, but let's look at our weekly time frame as well. This is also taking into context. You need it. You need to take things into context. So let's look at our weekly. Our weekly has been one time framing down for several weeks now. We've been one time framing down for two, three weeks in a row now, right? We continue to set lower lows and lower highs on our weekly time frame. So keeping that, you know, in the back of our head as context, once we got near the top of that balance high area that I had marked on my daily chart, uh, we bring that up. You can see how we wick rejected and now you're targeting the lows. The most likely scenario to happen, I mean, potentially, I'm not saying it's going to happen, um, but the probabilities favor us taking out last week's low, which is 43.50. So do we tomorrow, last day, uh, last day of the trading week, take out 43.50 and continue to fill this gap on the downside and continue to one time frame down? Or do we potentially continue to consolidate, have an inside week, and have some more choppy sessions ahead of us? You know, those are things that we got to keep in mind and think about. All right. So enough about my rant about the weekly and the daily. I just hope you guys understand the importance of, you know, knowing how to identify balance areas, because I guarantee you there were a ton of people that we're getting long up here at the highs, thinking we were going to get above the 50 day moving average and the 20 day moving average, right? We They were like, oh, we gapped above. They were like, oh, we gapped above the previous day's high. We're going to continue to drive up higher and higher and higher. And there was probably a lot of people that got caught long up here once we took out the first time frames high uh, and then only to get those buyers punched in the face and have a large reversal down. And then we one time frame down majority of the day setting lower lows and lower highs all day long. Um, and there are a few nuances to keep in mind throughout the entire day. Um, but, you know, with all that being said, let's look at our destinations just to show you guys more or less how we kind of uh, shaped out the day. I know that was a solid nine minute rant there, but, you know, I think that was very important to understand. So, like I said, we opened above the previous day's high of 55.25 pushed up pretty uh, pretty good and you know got that uh, balance high and that 10 wide point of control after getting that we uh in b in a period we rolled over reversed down and then continued to push down now yesterday was a double distribution day so initially you look to see if you hold in the upper distribution if you and i said in yesterday's video if you cannot 
uh, hold in the upper distribution, you would look to test 3350 and then push down into the lower distribution because as single prints were something to lean against the day of that they were created, you know, for long opportunities, they become downside targets. Just like today's single prints will become upside targets. And I'll mark those here in a minute. But you can see how we just liquidated right down into the lower distribution. Found some acceptance in the lower distribution. Right here, this push up in, um, what I want to say, what was it? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And G period uh, was a great short opportunity, not only against single prints to the upside that we had, but against the upper portion of the lower distribution, right? So if we were finding acceptance down here, you would have shorted right here at 24. Great short opportunity. I'm very upset that I did not take that, but great short opportunity here at 24 against that upper distribution that we had at 24. And then the single prints that we had on the downside uh, that filled at 26. So you had a two point risk, uh, two point to a three point risk to the upside, uh, you know, to come back and revisit the lows, which is down here at 07. So from 24 to 07, you were looking at about 23 points worth of gain, right? So risking three points to gain 23 points and then potentially even more as we probed and pushed lower to the downside today. Uh, late in the evening, uh, right as we got close to the close, uh, you know, great risk reward. There was another great risk reward opportunity here uh, in K period against the previous time frames high as we were one time framing down. Um, we had a short opportunity at 09. You know, you put your stop above 10 or 12. This market rolls over and you're profiting pretty good, right? Your target to the downside is that 94.25. Uh, especially after we began to find some acceptance below the previous day's low. So from 09 down to that target of 94.25, another great risk reward trade, in my opinion. Uh, so there were opportunities given to us today. I did get short early on today. I got short in the overnight session right here uh, on that push up against VWAP. Uh, and my target, because I did not think the uh, hype with NVIDIA and everything, the euphoria that most of the market had in the overnight session was going to hold. I uh, felt like there was going to be a good opportunity and we were like right above uh, my balance high. I just felt like maybe this market would not hold. I had a very tight risk on it. I was only risking about five to six points to the upside and my target was the previous day's high at 55.25. So, uh, you know, I held this all the way until basically the open this morning where we pushed down and I, found, I got filled on my position and made um, $444. One trade, $444. That's the only trade I took today um, as I just really wasn't that comfortable with the trades, but there were trade opportunities to, tra to take on the downside. Now let's look at the NQ. Let's look at NASDAQ. Same thing for the NASDAQ, except for they're a lot more volatile. They pushed up and gapped up pretty good because of NVIDIA earnings and, you know, Euphoria and momentum buyers and all that. They opened and drove straight down. You know, most people are probably up here screaming, uh, you know, uh, gap and go, gap and go. You know, they got above one, two, three previous days highs, afternoon rally high, and they're looking at this high day up here at uh, 44, at 15,442.25 as a target and they're like gap and go let's go get that right nope got punched in the face and all those buyers just absolutely liquidated this market and i mean a massive massive push down uh to the downside today for the nasdaq so buyers got absolutely hurt filled these single prints like they weren't even there uh nice and smooth like butter on the downside uh after b period opened up so you know <laughs> just very 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 smooth liquidation here in the nasdaq so same thing applied to the nasdaq right uh they found some acceptance in the lower distribution not quite as clean as the es but found some uh acceptance in the lower distribution and continued to push down lower uh, so let's go ahead and mark some destinations here as i have been ranting for a minute or not ranting but i've been giving you guys what i feel is very important information 
like I said, trade here against that uh, upper portion of the lower distribution and the single prints. Great, great, great trade opportunity. Very upset I did not take that. I wasn't mad that I missed all of this move to the downside. I was a little upset with myself for not taking this trade here and not taking this trade here. Two very good clean setups that I did not take. Um, especially the one here against 24.25. And that was a pretty clean setup against the 144 simple moving average. If I were to pull up the one minute chart here, you can see how we pushed up to that 144 simple moving average around that 24 area and that uh, standard deviation and then just rolled over. I mean, great, great, great short opportunity in that range. My computer is acting all types of slow. It's probably OBS. So let's go through, mark these destinations together. Hopefully you guys uh, will stick around for that. So now we have a new balance high just because we stretched it by a hair. 68.75. 68.75. Uh, is today's high of day. And I'm going to go ahead and label this balance high because I think it's going to be important that we know that in the future. 23. Until obviously we roll over and take out uh, the balance low, then we'll get rid of that. But for now, that is our balance high. Then we have a set of single prints that fill at 51 even. They start here at 39. And if you guys don't know what single prints are, uh, they're just intraday gap essentially. And I'll uh, have a video in the top right hand corner that you guys can see um, and go visit. And I talk a little bit more in depth on single prints and how to identify them. But single prints start here. If I can type, geez, Louise. We have single prints that start here at. 37.75. Or excuse me, they fill here. Single print, and then they start at 27.50. Now these are some large sets of single prints. We haven't seen this large of set in quite some time. Uh, just goes to show you the strength of the sellers today Oof. I need to adjust that so there's your first two sets so you have your upper distribution here from 6875 to 4451 okay that's the upper distribution then you have a set of single prints another set of single prints another set of single prints that start or that fill here at 2675 now they fill here because remember these are upside destinations. Keep that in mind, upside destinations. And I think because this video is so long, I'm going to avoid uh, breaking down the NASDAQ uh, to you guys. Uh, if you guys want to see me do that, then just you know leave a comment down below and I'll begin to do that more in future videos. Uh, but I'll just give you guys an update on some downside destinations for NASDAQ and then uh, leave you guys with that. Single prints start there. So that set starts there. Now this is the start of the lower distribution. Lower distribution is from 24.25 to 84.25. This is going to be the lower distribution. However, we did probe. So price probe at, that's where the, the market spiked from. So 0125 
is where this set of single or not set of single prints, but the uh, the market spiked from or probed from. So it just shows you uh, basically where there were sellers at. We'll try to see if there are sellers there tomorrow. And we're going to be looking for acceptance below this. If you're a seller today, uh, you're looking for acceptance below uh, basically the 4400 level. But to be more specific, uh, for 4401.25 is the price probe. And then you have uh, the lower end of the lower distribution here at the day's low, 84.25. Boom. All right. So there you have it, folks. Upper distribution, right? 4468.75 to 44.51. Sets of single prints. Lower distribution starts at 44.24.25 and ends at 43.84.25. Now, tomorrow you want to open up below 4401.25 if you're a seller. If not, then you're going to be looking to find acceptance inside this lower distribution. And if we can't take out the day's low here at 40, uh, 4384.25, you will look to rotate back up towards the upper portion of the upper distribution. If you get above 4424.25, you'll most likely fill these sets of single prints on the upside. If there is really good push and volume to the upside, uh, these become targets to fill to the upside. So you would look to fill from 2425 to 26, from 27 uh, to 37 and then from 39 to 51 and then dip your toe into the upper distribution however on the downside if we open below the price probe or the day's low uh, you have downside destinations of 4372.25 uh, 4367.25 afternoon pullback low and then 4350 our balance low and low of day from 818.23 uh, basically uh, what, what day was that? I can't tell you. Couldn't tell you what day that was. Uh, Friday. Friday's low, essentially. So we take that out, and then we'll be one time framing down on the daily. Now let's go ahead and look at our NASDAQ downside destinations. Like I said, I'm not going to mark the uh, the upside destinations for you guys. Uh, if you guys want to see that, then let me know. But for right now, downside destinations uh, would be today's low of day, 14 854.75, uh, then the 14,788.75 level below that, 667 afternoon pullback low below that, 16 or 609.25, and then uh, 560 nine wide point of control from June 9th of 2023. So there's your downside destinations. Uh, and then one, one more time, just look over the daily. We are in a balance. Our balance uh, high got stretched just a hair today. So let's update this to 68. Oh, not F25. 68.25. So that was our balance high now. So you look to rotate down towards, since we tested the balance high and just stretched it a hair, you now want to test the downside balance of 43.50. Take that out. If you're a seller, take that out, fill the gap. Uh, that fills at 43.25.50. So, you know, basically a good, a really good push to the downside there uh, would be ultimately our destination if we began to one time frame down. And then if we get a really, really, really good push, I mean, today's volume was way above average. Uh, if we get a really good push, we have another downside gap that fills at 42.39.75. So, just above the 200 day moving average, which I've been talking about here for a little while. I think we're going to target that at some point in time, you know, before we make a new high on the year, I do think we're going to back test the 200 day moving average. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you all for stopping by. If you made it to the end of this video, please leave a like down below. Hopefully you guys found this video very informational and we'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.